welcome back to your last geometry review. This is review packet F and it's talking about congruent triangles which uh, puts us in the proof section. And these reviews are to help you in the final with stuff that comes up plus I'm sending a final review home with you. Um, I have this kind of section off the board looks like a mess. I'm going to do my best to explain it. Uh, but it's just understanding how uh, corresponding parts work and uh, some of the theorems and corollaries. So I'm going to take you through a couple different sections on here and then I'm going to let you go. So the first section talks all about uh, corresponding parts. And corresponding parts are like matching parts in two different triangles. In order for things to be congruent, they must be equal on all sides and all angles. So there's three angles in a triangle, three sides in a triangle. And each part has to line up with its correct or corresponding part. Um, so the first part is just naming corresponding parts. Um, so when we look at these two triangles, and I did my best to make these like they were in the picture, but they're not all like that, okay? It says M corresponds to what angle? Well, M in this triangle is the same as R in this triangle. They're the same point, the same uh, part of the triangle. So you would write R here. That just means M goes with R. J goes with P. K goes with Q, okay? And this simulates a side, side PR, which is this one, uh, corresponds to what? side and now if they started with P and went down you got to start with J and go down so side J M all right so that's the first part just learning corresponding parts in there and there's like six questions with that okay uh, just match them up and write it in there uh, the next part right here is talking about uh, naming the triangles when you name them they they have to be in the same letter order just like this needs to be PR and JM. If you're naming a triangle and you start with M, you must start with R on the second one. So pretend these triangles are equal. They clearly are not, but we know in geometry that we can't use our eyes. Uh, we have to use deductive reasoning. So FGH goes FGH. That means this one would be triangle FJH. All right. JFH, JFH, oh, JFH. So it starts down here. So this one would be GFH. Okay, so it's all about just lining them up and writing them the correct way. That's the first couple lessons, okay? Then we talk about ways that you can prove triangles. And the first one they talk about is side, side, side. That means if three sides of one triangle are equal to three sides of the other triangle, you can deduce that they are congruent, okay? You don't have to worry about the angles. It's side, side, side. So they give you this picture, uh, and you have a triangle here, and you have a triangle here, and then they tell you what they are. Uh, first of all, they ask you RS, that's this line down here, corresponds to what? What other line looks like RS? Well, guess what? It's RS because they are sharing that this triangle shares that side and that triangle shares that side. So you would mark, uh, when you're marking things that match, we'll mark a three on this and we'll mark twos, ones and twos on the legs. You mark them with the same marks so that you know that they're equal. Uh, for instance, this side is eight and that side's eight. I'd mark them both with a 1. That means this one is the same as that one. This one's 6 and that one's 6. So I mark them both with 2's. And then this one, because it's shared, I put the 3 on it. Okay? That shows this side equals that side, this side equals that side, and this side is the same, which is an identity property. So it says, is triangle RSV, RSV, that's this one, congruent to R? T S. Now they did not write this. Um, they go R S V. So they go down up, and then this one goes R T S, like that. Okay. However, in this case, they are they did not write it in the correct order. If this one went R S V, this one should have said R S T. 
So you could write R, R, S, T on this one. And uh, those are congruent like that, okay? So um, it's kind of a tricky question. Yeah, the triangles are congruent no matter which way you label them because all their sides are the same, but they didn't label it correct. So maybe just fix the labeling. Uh, or this one would be RVS. Okay, to RTS or this one. So just fix it. And they are because they have one side, two sides, and three sides. So side, side, side. So they are congruent. Yes. All right. Uh, moving on to this one. This is SAS, side, angle, side, which means they have to side, they have to have a side. Then the angle that they share, it has to be in the middle of the side. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and this is one of the triangles. This is a common proof that we get in our book. We did this one probably like three times with different situations. Um, look at the triangle and see what you got here, okay? You got a side here and a side here. You got a side here and you got a side here. If we were doing side, angle, side like we're supposed to be, the angle that we need is this one because that would be side, angle, side. It would not be side, angle, side, because we don't know this side. So the angle has to be in between the two sides. So we're looking to prove these two things are the same. So the first thing it says, what kind of angles are ACB and ECD? They're talking about the two angles. And what kind are they? Well, if you paid attention to the last packet that we are, those make an X, which are vertical angles. So you're going to write vertical angles. What do we know about vertical angles? Vertical angles are equal. So that makes, when you put this little line mark, that means, yes, they are equal. Move on down. It says CE, that's this line right here, is correspondent to what? Well, this one has a one dash. What does this one have? A one dash? So it needs to be uh, CA because they wrote it C to E, this one would be C to A. That's what corresponds, and it's not a blank, it goes down here. Pretend I didn't do that, okay? All right, and the last one says, is triangle ACB, ACB congruent to EDC? Again, they mix the letters up. We know these two things are congruent, however, it should really say ACB, is congruent to um, E, C, D. The C should be in the middle. Okay, just like the C's in the middle of that one. So yes, they are congruent, but rewrite it like that the way it should be. The last one that they tell you is angle, side, angle. Now I wanna specify there is no angle, side, side, which would spell a potty word, okay? So don't write that on there. It's angle, side, angle, which means we need an angle, we need a side, and then we need another angle. Uh, but they all need to be right in a row, like that one. So uh, this is another one that we've done a proof on. TRS, TRS, that's this little angle right here, corresponds to, guess what? QRS, this little angle right here. So that's just corresponding parts. And because they have a double tally mark here, that means those two are equal because this is the one. So that, that angle's equal, that angle's equal. And all we need is our side, okay? Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You have a question that says, is RTS and RQS congruent, and they wrote them in the right way. Well, I didn't answer the question in between here, but what do these triangles share? They share this line, right? This triangle needs that line, so this is a side that they share, okay? So, could I go angle, side, angle? Yes, so yes, they are congruent. This probably answers one of your questions there. Then it says, is angle T, and angle Q congruent. All right, is this one, 
this one would be a three, and this one congruent. Well, unless they gave you information, and I didn't answer it because I didn't answer the ones in between. If they gave you information, yes, they are. If they don't give you any information right now, you say no. Um, they will be because a triangle adds up to 180 degrees, and if this angle and this angle are the same, you're going to subtract that from 180 to find this one. And if um, the, it'll have to be the same, 180 minus whatever they are. Uh, however, if they don't give you that information, do not assume. Yes, it works out that way, but you're not allowed to assume in this, okay? So, as of right now, unless 24 says something about those angles, or, uh, oh, backtrack of what I just said, you're not allowed to assume, but if we've proven that the triangles were already congruent, then yes, they are. If you said, I forgot that we just did this. <laughs> if you said RTS and RQS are congruent, that means all their parts, all their angles, all their sides have to equal one another. So yes, and that is called corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal, or CPCTE. And I, tell, uh, I told you at the beginning of the year, and I'll tell you for the final, if you're doing a proof and they ask you for an angle or a side after you've proven that that triangle is congruent, the answer is always C, P, C, T, E. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are equal. There's a few more questions on here uh, that just puts together your knowledge on pictures. Now, they're pictures and no words. You have to go by the lines that are on there, and that's what I'm talking about. You cannot assume. If there's no line there, you can't assume. The only one that you may get away with is if they share a side, okay? Do your best on it. I hope I didn't confuse you too much on this one. Have a good rest of your day, and God bless.